I'm Ryan Shelton with Group One Limited, the distributor for Digico here in the US. The goal of this video is to give you an overview of the Digico integrated platform. We don't have time to go over every configuration in detail, so for more info and detailed explanations of setup, configuration, and best practices, we'll provide some links at the end of this video you can reference. Also, this is live, so please reach out with any questions you have and we'll make sure to answer those at the end. So first things first, what is Digico's integrated platform? The Digico integrated platform is the heart of our quantum NSD software that lets you expand control beyond just your digital mixing console. You can remotely control theatrical software like QLab, DAWs like Reaper, immersive loudspeaker software like Laisa or Soundscape, uh, Waves audio plugins, Clang immersive processing, and many, many more. Why do you need it? To simplify and combine complex multi operations or multi system operations into a central piece of software. The idea is that if you're needing to fire multiple cues or snapshots simultaneously across multiple computers or applications, but you only have one operator, the Digico integrated platform will let you do just that. In short, it will save you time and let you do things you never thought possible. So we don't have time to go through all of these today, but here is a current list of our integrations for the uh, Quantum and SD series digital console software. Our R&D team is always hard at work developing new integrations. So if there is something you want to see from us, please let us know. We don't build this software for ourselves, we build it for you. All right, most of the magic for controlling other devices comes from the external control menu. You will uh, use this to connect to other computers running the control application. So iPads, Laisa, OSC applications, and Clang. The other protocols we'll talk about today will be baked right into the software and require little to no setup. All right, first thing we're gonna jump into is something called Foria 4. It is a centralized mixing engine. Think about this as essentially four smaller consoles crammed into a central chassis, and you can add the IO that you need and the control you need wherever you need it throughout your facility. And this can operate as a standalone unit, but one of the cool integrations is being able to connect it with Digico Quantum or SD consoles, so you can actually integrate the two and use them as one. So let's show you first how this is connected up, and then we're gonna go into what you can actually do with it. So here we have an existing church or a house of worship, and you're using two fully loaded SD racks with 32-bit Stadius mic pre's. Now, I'm sure this is exactly what you have in your church and everybody has this, but bear with me for sake of the example here. All right, let's add in the Foria 4 system. All right, so we've added it in and now we need to wire it up and connect it. We're gonna use OptiCore for this. So we're gonna put an OptiCore DMI card in the 4 u 4 chassis and we're gonna connect it all together. We're gonna to go into more detail on OptiCore in just a little bit. So just for now, understand it's a fiber loop system. So we've connected this up and what this means is we can now route inputs from that Quantum 7 at front of house to the 4 u 4 system. So it can be used in other rooms or processing or whatever it needs. And we can also take audio that's gonna come into the 4 u 4 and route that back to either of the Quantum 7s or both of them. All right, so the other thing that this uh, 4 u 4 will let you do is maybe we put a Dante card in here and now we can have the outputs from the front of house actually route through the 4 u 4 and feed our processing for our PA or maybe directly to our amps if the processing is inside of that. All right, now we have these four other spaces. We actually have a backstage and a lobby, which are zoned together. We have a chapel, we have a youth room, we have a cafe, and those all need some form of IO. So here we're gonna add in what's called a 164 wall LCD into the chapel and the youth room, and we have a more portable version, the 168 for the cafe. And we simply just connect those to the existing ports on the 4 u 4 So now we actually have an audio path from those rooms through the 4 u 4 and then via OptiCore back to the Quantum 7. Now we need control. Control in, for in this case is gonna be like in-wall Decora controllers for like the backstage and the lobby. Um, those are PoE powered. They sit on a traditional network, which you'll see here. We're gonna wire all this up together. We have an A Control 8 in the chapel and youth room. This is eight faders, motorized faders. That's also connected via PoE Plus. And then we have a smaller, more portable compact unit that gives you multiple channels uh, to control, but it's called the A Control 6, and that's in the cafe. All of this is wired together. Now that it's wired all together, we can actually take control of these mic pre's in the chapel, the youth room, the cafe, directly from the main sanctuary if we need to, uh, and we can send audio in both directions. 
So what do you get out of integrating the 4U4 system with Digico? So first off, route and process audio. We talked about that. You also get to auto name inputs from the Quantum or SD consoles. So if once I do those tying of together of those two channels, so from the mic pre in, let's say, the youth room to the Quantum 7, the name that I assign it will actually back uh, feed and connect back through both systems. So it saves you time and you can make sure you're controlling the right channel. Uh, and lastly, you get full control of the mic pre's. So this means on the Quantum console, I could actually turn my encoder for the mic pre and I would actually be directly controlling the mic pre in that youth room. It's a pretty awesome feature to be able to set this up. All right, now onto Waves. So Waves is external audio processing. So uh, let's quickly show you how this is set up. We have a Wave, or sorry, a Digico SD12 uh, that has a Waves DMI card in it. We have a SoundGrid server, and in this case, we actually have a redundant server because it's PowerPoint and we can do that easily. Uh, we have a Mac or a PC running the Super Rack or Multi Rack application and a touchscreen connected to that. So we simply wire everything up through an approved gigabit switch from Waves, and you'll notice that there's actually two lines uh, going to the console, to the SD12 in this case. One is going to that DMI card for audio, which is what just about every other console will allow you to do when you connect to Waves, but the second connection is actually going to the Digico control port, and this is how we integrate them together. So the idea is that we can take control of Waves and have it act as one with the Digico system. So what do you get with Waves when you integrate it? You have actually have the selected Waves rack automatically follows the selected channel on the console. What this means is if I have Waves inserted on channel one, and I solo channel one on my Digico, it's actually automatically gonna follow in the Waves Super Rack application. You also get auto naming of racks. So as I name racks within Waves, they name my sockets in Digico and vice versa. I have synchronized snapshot creation, updating, and recall. This is huge, this saves so much time. If I create a snapshot on my Digico platform, it automatically creates the same name and the same number in the Waves Super Rack or Multi Rack application. And as I move through those snapshots, they stay synchronized. And as I update or recall those snapshots, they stay synchronized. You also have automatic loading and saving of sessions. This is another huge time saver, and it keeps you from making those little small mistakes of just having the wrong session loaded. So when you load your main session on your Digico, it will actually trigger the corresponding session within Waves to be loaded at the same time. All right, now Clang. Clang is immersive mixing for in-ear monitors. That means for musicians or for people who are wearing in-ears. So this could be for a live stream, um, but for, in most cases, it's going to be for your musicians on stage. Now, this is a pretty cool setup as well, but this is designed for monitor engineers and uh, for houses of worship or for touring. So this is primarily dedicated for those who are at a monitor console. So let's connect our SD rack. This is how we're gonna get inputs and outputs through our system. So we have a Quantum 338 console connected to an SD rack, also with 32-bit pre's and 32-bit outputs, we're wiring up the outputs directly to our wireless in-ear transmitters. This is a completely normal setup for pretty much anybody. Uh, once again, at a monitor position, you're used to this. Now we're gonna add in the Clang DMI card into this console. And then we're actually going to wire that Clang DMI console through its network port back to the console's network port. So here's where we tie the two together. Now we also need a Mac or a PC running the Clang application. Um, you're gonna have this also wired up and connected to the Quantum 338. So now they're networked together, and then of course, what do you get with this? When you do this, you actually get improved speed, performance, and control. They truly integrate together as one. Once the setup is finished, I can solo a mix on my Clang, and it will actually follow in the application together um, as I make changes to the elevation or the panning or the azimuth or what we call our immersive mixing or think about it as 3D or something like that. All of those controls tie together as one. You get automatic synchronization of mix settings. So this means as I make mix changes on my console, I'm actually remote controlling the DMI card if it's assigned to that DMI card. And then you have automatic synchronization of channel naming. This should be obvious, but as I name a channel on my Digico, it has the option to pull in that name uh, quickly and assign it in the Clang application. I get to select uh, the selected mix in Clang follows the solo dox master. And then probably the most important thing is that you hear on the console, in your ears as a monitor engineer, exactly the same immersive mix that your artist is hearing. 
that's huge. So it's a fast, efficient workflow, very easy to get through. We have more videos and links on how to do this at the end, so don't worry, we'll go into more detail. All right, let's talk about OSC. OSC is Open Sound Control. This has actually been around for a little while, but it's incredibly, it's gained a lot of steam recently. And basically the idea here is that you can take a whole lot of different programs and from a variety of different manufacturers that don't talk to each other and using a common language, OSC, which is a network-based uh, protocol to be able to control all these together. So let's talk about the wiring real quick. It's incredibly simple. Um, you can actually just connect the control port on this Quantum 5 to the laptop that we're running here. And on the laptop, we could be running things like QLab, Reaper, BitCompanion, OSC Pilot, really anything OSC, and there's a lot of them out there. Uh, you could actually forego the switch and just directly connect these as well, or connect them to multiple clients as needed. So what do you get with OSC? First and foremost, you get open source flexibility. So that means you can tie into anything. We talked about a few. You can control industry standard applications. So think about something like QLab. If you're in theater or cruise ships or theme parks, uh, even churches, you're probably used to a scripting software like QLab. Um, you can tie the two together. And actually fun, uh, you can actually control it either way. So you can have QLab control the Digico or Digico controlled QLab. And of course, from QLab onto many others from there. You can control DAWs like Reaper, uh, play, stop, rewind, locate, uh, things like that. You can do all your transport controls, even zoom controls. Reaper makes it really easy to map OSC commands directly to existing commands. I think they call this binding in the software. Other devices can trigger macros on the quantum software. So you can have something like BitCompanion uh, Stream Deck. Uh, you can tie the two together and you can have more macro controls or more physical buttons to be able to trigger commands on your SD uh, or quantum software. And in fact, uh, S software allows you to even trigger snapshots and things like that. All right, now on to OptiCore. I told you a little bit about this earlier, but OptiCore is a high capacity, low latency digital audio network. We have actually been integrated in OptiCore for a long time now, uh, and there's a whole lot you can do with this. First of all, the quick overview of OptiCore is a fiber ring-based network. So the idea here is that we start adding devices and we connect cables between each of the devices in a ring or a loop topology. So here you're gonna see we added Quantum 338s, orange boxes, 404s, SD racks, some OptiCore devices, those are X6Rs, nano racks, and more consoles. And we just go from device to device, to device, device, back to the first. And what's very important about OptiCore and one of the huge benefits is the redundancy. So you saw a blue ring there get added. OptiCore actually allows you to run audio and control in both directions around the loop simultaneously. And what this means is built-in redundancy. So if I were to have one of these devices powered off or unplugged or something like that happened, a cable was disconnected, we would actually have audio and control to all the other devices that are still connected immediately. It doesn't matter where that break occurs. It's amazing and you don't have to do anything. It's automatic. So here's a brief list of devices um, that you can connect between Digico and other devices. You'll notice here that we have quantum consoles, SD consoles, an orange box, which can actually connect you to Dante, Matty, Clang, AES, Analog, Waves, or uh, Hydra. Um, the 44 we mentioned earlier, uh, our SD racks, OptiCore devices, and some ClearCom devices. Those can all be added into the loop. All right, so what do you get with or when you integrate OptiCore into Digico. So you get full control of stage racks. This means everything from mic pre's, 48 volt phantom power, gain tracking, splits and sharing, uh, setting up of racks, all that stuff. In fact, we can even push firmware updates to the racks through OptiCore as well. It's incredibly integrated. Um, you will have the option to run at 48 or 96K. You can add up to five consoles. They can all talk to each other. Uh, 14 rack IDs. Uh, you can have 504 channels uh, of audio at 48 or 96K. Um, you have console to console busing. This is one of my favorites. So I'm at a front of house console and I want to send my talk back. Um, I can do that via OptiCore. Uh, if I am also mixing down stems, I could send those stems also on from front of house to maybe hit a smaller broadcast desk uh, or depending upon how it's going, I could actually be sent the other way. Broadcast could be sending me stems. 
All right, all consoles can automatically see all inputs. So that means that when a device with inputs is added to the network, they just show up to all the other consoles. It's automatic there as well. And then output cards are configured on a card by card basis. That means me at front of house can have the outputs that I need. Monitors can have the rest of the outputs. And of course, broadcast gets what they get as well. All right, let's move on to Dante. Uh, obviously, you probably know what Dante is. It's been around for a while. Uh, they market it heavily. It is a fantastic AV over IP solution. So this is a network-based protocol. Um, and with that comes a really simple way to be able to do physical connections. So let's talk about how things are wired up with Dante. Here we have an SD12, and that actually is gonna have our DMI Dante 64 at 96 card installed. And then we're gonna start adding IO. So here we have a 168D, we have a 164D, actually a couple of those, and then we're gonna add some wireless uh, Dante receivers. We're gonna add an orange box that has a Dante and a Clang card in it, so for some processing. And simply, we just bring everything back to a switch. Um, connect everything up there, this is where you can either let uh, a switch or a router add DHCP or not. Um, Dante uh, usually works best the less you do on the networking side, so letting things be self-assigned, etc. So that is a very simple way to connect everything together. Once connected, what do you get? So with Dante, you get the flexibility of Dante's AVOIP network. So there are, well, I'd say, probably say most manufacturers allow you to directly talk and tie into Dante right now. So there's a vast network of manufacturers you can directly wire together digitally. You also get full control of our stage rack. So if you have a Digico stage rack, you can control mic pre's, phantom power, gain tracking, uh, splits and sharing, things that those racks enable, you can do through that protocol as well. You can also run everything at 48 or 96. All right, so that about wraps it up for the presentation portion of this. Um, Kyle actually has a link he's gonna share here. Uh, he's a producer in the background that actually has a QR code. So if you have your phone with you, uh, tablet, whatever, and you can point it at this QR code, open the camera app, point it at that QR code, it should pop up with a link. In that link is a folder. We've put together a lot of different resources. So we have videos from other manufacturers on how they implement OSC. We also had two gentlemen who were uh, gracious enough to share their work with us. Manuel from Germany, uh, his YouTube channel is TechWiz Audio. And then we have Fraser from Australia, Moniker Audio. And they both allowed us to share their OSC workflows. Uh, Manuel will take you through, um, uh, I think it's a bit focus or bit companion, uh, allowing you to do stream deck. And then uh, Fraser is allowing you to do and showing you how he set up Reaper, uh, being able to do all the controls together in that. So that's the basics of that. That link has many more options um, that you'll see in there, more videos that you can follow. And of course, you can always reach out to us. Uh, we also have an email address that we can share with you. You'll see at the end of the stream where you can just reach out to us with any questions. Thanks for joining us today. And uh, yeah, really appreciate to everybody. Kyle, Matt, for being part of this. And we'll see you soon. Thanks.